there are lots of PC games that are meant to play with a controller, like the entire Batman Arkham series of games which I just cannot imagine myself playing with a keyboard with all of those buttons. And so, when it comes to controllers or gamepads as you call it, the one criteria that I have right now is for it to be multi-platform, so you are able to connect to your PC, maybe one or two of your consoles like Xbox, PS4 or maybe the Nintendo Switch. And which is why we got this one, the Gully Kit Smart King Kong Pro. Despite its name, this is actually a very featureful controller which I just want to go through all of its features and share you my experience with it because I've been using it for more than half a year and I'll tell you why. So the reason why I've been using this controller for more than 6 months without a reveal is actually because there's uh, version 2. This is the version 2 of the controller itself and this is version 1. The packaging is totally different and I'll start to get into some of those comparisons now because version 1 comes in this kind of EVA fabric type hard shell case which I really like because you have this kind of pouch here you can stuff in some other things in it maybe your charging cable or whatever and the overall case quality is fantastic. The controller looks kind of identical, remember this is version 1 and this is version 2, the packaging is a lot smaller comes in this simpler cardboard box and the controller itself is protected by this hard shell plastic clamshell kind of case which opens up like this still works but you can't stuff in any other accessories to pack it around with you so the main differences between version 1 and version 2, this is version 1 and this one is version 2. By aesthetics, how you can tell them apart is because of these different colored shoulder and trigger buttons and that's about it. One of the major improvements on the version 2 is of course the joysticks itself because when I complained to Gully Kid about version 1's analog sticks, they just told me, well, there's a version 2 coming so hold off to the review and which is why it took 6 months for us to finally get by this controller itself. So controller aside for now, let's just go through the packaging itself. Here we got a box which only houses the USB Type-C charging cable which I'm really glad they are using USB Type-C in today's standards. Let's just put it back there and within the packet of documentation we have quite a lot of stuff to go around. So we have the user manual itself which I'm not really going to touch because even though this controller has a lot of features, it comes with this card and this card actually just summarizes what all the buttons do and how you activate all of those features. Uh, it's technically a one-sided card because the other side is just written in Chinese and this side is in English. So we'll just put that alongside with the controller because that's important. Product pamphlet, which I'm not going to go through, and also Gully Kit sticker. So back to the controller itself. This controller is covered in this kind of soft touch material. I'm not too sure why they opted in for this kind of material because it might get sticky over time as we've experienced with many other products covered in this kind of soft touch material. And well, overall it does feel quite hollow to begin with, especially when you start to hit the trigger button and then you start to hear the echoes that just don't really sound that premium. As for the buttons itself, I do think that Gully Kit did a pretty good job because there's also improvement compared to version 1. The buttons are now a tad bit softer compared to before and they're using Alps micro switches. But one thing I realized it's kind of funny is that this far right button here, it's flat compared to the curvature of the body itself. And the reason why I realized this is because I have this controller with me. This is the Xbox One S controller and this controller is heavily modified which you can find out at the top right corner there and the far right button here is curved alongside with the body of the controller. While we are already comparing with the Xbox One controller itself, well I do like this kind of layout because the asymmetrical joysticks just make me feel more natural when I'm playing games for a long time and it doesn't strain my fingers. 
And another difference that the Gully Kit has is the middle cluster of keys here. One particular complaint that I have while playing the Nintendo Switch with this controller is where the plus and minus keys are. So when I was playing, what was that? I think it was Bayonetta or Xenoblade, I forgot. I wanted to press the plus key and I consistently hit the home key, which is just something to get used to. I do wish that Gully Kid would just place the screenshot and home button somewhere else or maybe just swap it with the plus and minus keys. But it's just something that we have to live with while using the Smart King Kong Pro Controller. And there are also two more additional keys at the center here. One of it is the gear key, and then another one is the AI key, which we'll get into it by referring this card itself, because all of the features are listed on this card itself. So let's just go through it in a kind of a speed run kind of way. So by holding the gear key and pressing all of these face buttons, including the R and ZR key, which is this trigger at the back here, we get something called repeated shooting, which technically just means turbo mode. And there are technically two ways of turboing your keys on the Smart King Kong Pro controller, which I really like. Firstly, it will just be repeating the keys when you are holding the button itself. And the second turbo mode is you just have to press once to toggle the repeating keys. So you can only disable the turbo key when you press on the key again. And this secondary turbo mode is actually why I like this controller a lot because I managed to cheat in Bayonetta 2 when there are challenges that tells me that I just need to use the gun to kill all the enemies. So what I did is enable turbo mode, make it shoot for me, and then I just blasted through all of the enemies without any issues at all. So yeah, if you're not a Bayonetta fan, I'm sure that you're an Animal Crossing fan, if there's a meteor shower at night, this controller can help you make your wish for the whole night. So what I did is I just leave the controller there, make a wish for me for the whole night, and I got about 100 wishes. So that's cool, but you do need to keep note that this controller will turn itself off if you do not press any buttons or push any triggers. So like about every 10 minutes, it will shut itself off. So just make sure you give the joysticks a little push to keep it away. And the second feature on this card here is AB and XY keys interchange. If you realize the Xbox controller and the Nintendo Switch controller has different positions for its AB and XY keys, they are swapped. So if you want to make them match with each other, then just use this feature, I guess. For me, I just leave it be because I've already got used to both of these controllers anyway. And the third feature available here is vibration setting. You can have three different vibration levels and you can also turn it off if you want to, which I want my vibration to be kind of strong, so that's good. And then motion sensing or motion sensing. So this is kind of a funny feature because this controller has a gyroscope in it. And for example, if I pair this controller with my PC and then I start playing GTA 5, I can go into aiming mode by holding this key and then I can start to pan around the controller like I'm using a mouse. So that's something interesting, I guess, if you want to use it. And then we also have another feature here called stick sensitivity setting, which you can just tune how sensitive you want the joysticks to be. And then the last feature here is to tune the sensitivity of this analog triggers at the back here. So those are cool. And by the way, these triggers are also using hall sensors, so they are contactless and presumably they last longer than traditional analog triggers. And there are also some additional features on the Gully Kids Smart King Kong Pro controller, like amiibo functionality for Nintendo Switch, especially useful if you want to get your villagers through amiibo cards, I guess. And then there's also one more feature, which is the cross-platform functionality at the back here. Unfortunately, you cannot connect up to two devices at once, but there's a Bluetooth limitation rather than this controller's limitation. So yeah, that's just something that I wish they have, but it's okay if they don't have it. And before I forget, Gully Kit is constantly improving this controller through software updates. So do make sure to keep an eye out on their Facebook page or their website for future firmware updates of this controller. So far, I've updated it for about three times right now, and it only works on PCs. So yeah, make sure you have a PC 
before you start to use this controller. And as for the battery life, well, I played Xenoblade Chronicles recently and throughout a single charge, I can get about 10 hours of playtime. I think it's 10 hours because it's just a little too long to, for my comfort. So I just plug it in after like about 10 hours of playtime before the controller just cuts itself off and ruin my playtime. So all in all, this controller is very featureful, but of course the build quality is still not as good as the Xbox One because its price is also much lower compared to this controller. And if you can find it on AliExpress, I think, yeah, I'm not sure if it's available on Shopee on Lazada right now, but you can get it officially from Gully Kit at AliExpress for the price of 44 or 49 US dollars which I think is kind of a good deal especially with all the features and you can just cheat in some games in the most legit way ever through its macro functionality and turbo keys so yeah if you want to make a wish in Animal Crossing then yeah this controller is good before we end this video there's also another version of this controller which is the Gully Kit Smart King Kong without the Pro and that is with the model number of NS08 there are a few missing features here and there but overall it is the exact same build quality with some of the features retained from the Pro model which there is a handy chart right here and I will show you right now and so that is all we have to share about the Gully Kid Smart King Kong Pro controller it's been 6 months and overall I still like this controller very much and I will see you in the next video if you have any questions do leave them down in the comment section below i will get back to my gaming right now because xenoblades is calling and spoiler alert the xenoblade is not called xenoblade what the heck